So good morning and welcome to NorCal PTAC's webinar in partnership with the New America Community Corporation Women's Business Center, Oakland. Uh, this webinar is on the woman-owned business, woman-owned small business certification. Um, so it, we are lucky enough to have Darlene Neal here. She is the director of the WBC Oakland. And Nancy Pigeon is our very own procurement specialist with NorCal PTAC. She's gonna be giving the main presentation. And my name is James Forrest. I am the program coordinator with NorCal PTAC. Uh, we're gonna hand things over to um, both of these lovely people here, but just right now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our program in case you're wondering what PTAC stands for. It stands for the Northern California Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Obviously, that's a bit of a mouthful. These acronyms can get out of control, uh, but it's better than saying that whole name all at once. So what do we do? We are a nonprofit center. Uh, we are funded by the federal government, the Defense Logistics Agency, as well as state and local sources. Um, all of this means we provide our services at no cost at all to our clients. Um, we are a nonprofit center. Like I said, we're hosted by the Humboldt State University Sponsored Programs Foundation. You can see that green map. That's our service area. And then that red star up at the top in Humboldt County, that is where our center is uh, located, administered. Um, most of our procurement specialists are remote and they, and they work from across the country. Uh, but that red star is where I'm sitting. That's Arcata, California, where HSU campus is. So uh, just some fun facts about us. In 2020 alone, we helped our clients win more than $314 million in government contracts. That's nearly twice as much as in 2019. And as we all know, 2020 was a difficult year for everyone. So um, we're very happy to be putting uh, money into the pockets uh, of, of folks in these communities. A lot of small business owners who have been suffering because of the pandemic. Um, so how do we do this? How do we assist our clients? Three basic core services. The first is one-on-one -on -one counseling. So procurement specialists, for instance, Nancy Pigeon here, uh, they can meet with you remotely if you're accepted as a client and go over just about any topic related to government contracting, including certifications, which is what we're talking about today, marketplace research, uh, troubleshooting, preparing capability statements, uh, all sorts of um, uh, compliance issues, updates, cybersecurity, you name it. Um, as long as it has to do with government contracting, we do it. We also do a custom bid matching profile. This is pretty cool. We'll, you'll work with your uh, client, your counselor to set up uh, this profile. Basically you enter your criteria and then the system sends you bid opportunities that it thinks match what your business sells. So that can help you stay on top of the opportunities made available to you. Then of course we have our resources and trainings like the one we're putting on today. Uh, in normal times, these are all throughout uh, our service area. But uh, of course, right now they are all remote. So this is great because we get folks joining from Florida and Maine and Chicago. Um, but I do look forward to seeing some faces eventually. Um, some criteria for being a PTAC client. You have to be, your business has to be located in our service area. So we have these 15 counties here. Um, so if you, if you apply with an address outside of that, unfortunately I will reject you and send you somewhere else. Um, you also have, a, have to have a business that is fully set up and operational, and we, um, we say the cutoff for being fully in business is you have at least one quarter of sales under your belt. So if you've got every, all the certifications and it's all registered, but you just don't have any sales yet, um, do wait a little bit and then apply for us once you've had some success in the private marketplace or however you want. Um, and that's how we determine generally some contract readiness. Um, and, uh, and, and you have to be interested in government contracting. So if you satisfy all those three, go ahead and apply for us. We'd love to see you in our database and uh, get to know you. Our website is norcalptac.org. If you are not in this service area here, that is fine. Uh, there's another website, aptac-us, find a PTAC that will uh, give you your local PTAC. There's 94 across the country. We are a network of independently run centers, so you can find your own. Um, you can also just Google it. I find Google your county name and then the PTAC. Want to give a shout out to the SBDC of Northern California. NorCal SBDC is a nonprofit network made up of 18 centers dedicated to helping small businesses with every aspect of business creation, growth management, operations. So we do procurement specific, they do general. They're a great place to start if you're not quite ready for contracting, you haven't had the, your business set up and getting sales yet. 
So with that, that hyperlink there, we'll also find your local SPDC. Same trick works for Googling it. Uh, we have some COVID-19 resources. You are welcome to check them out on our website. Um, so if you would like to respond to the pandemic or your business has been in, impacted by the pandemic, check these out. And uh, now I'm very happy to introduce Darlene Neal of the Women's Business Center in Oakland. She is their director and um, she's really cool. She's going to talk a little bit about the program. Yes, thank you. Thank you, James. And welcome everyone to today's webinar. We are so excited to share such great information with you about the starting of your business, um, as well as looking at pivoting your business as you look at the um, centers and how we can assist you. So A New America is a nonprofit organization, and we have been around for the last 21 years. The Women's Business Center has been around for the last 15 years, and our goal at the Women's Business Center is to help entrepreneurs to really get their business established, um, help you with forming your ideas and turning those ideas into realities to, for your dreams. And so part of what we do as a Women's Business Center is provide educational resources for you. So there's training that we provide, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and we provide technical assistance. And so we are here to help. And as you can see, um, a lot of the things that we do around the community is to really embrace you where you're at. And so that means that we are helping you regardless to where you're starting at. So we look at helping you to grow your business and again, start your business. And with that, um, for myself, I've come from a financial education background. And so that allows me to really share some great opportunities with entrepreneurs as they start to look at what they're doing for their business from a holistic standpoint of not just the starting a business, but understanding the financial aspects of it. And so again, we are excited about this opportunity today with PTAC to share with you some great information. You can reach us at anewamerica.org and we look forward to answering your questions as we go out this session. Thank you again. Awesome, thanks so much, Darlene. And yeah, she will be around for the Q&A at the end. Um, so please direct some questions to her and hit them up. They're a great partner of ours. All right. We are, it's now time for the main presentation here. We have Nancy Pigeon. She's a procurement specialist with our own center, NorCal PTAC. Um, and you are in excellent hands with her as you will <laughs> see shortly. So thanks, Nancy. All right. Thanks, James. Uh, and before we get in the presentation, just want to tell you a little bit about myself. So, you know, you know, my experience and my background. Um, I'm a, a retired chief. Air Force Chief Master Sergeant. Um, I did 22 years in the Air Force, um, 10 years with ammo. That's a, a kind of a fun fact there. I used to build bombs and, and take munitions out to the A-10 uh, Warthog aircraft, one of my favorite aircrafts in the Air Force. Um, after that, um, after I retired, I went into the federal government contracting profession uh, for 10 years. Uh, I worked for the Air Force as a civilian. Um, I moved out to California to work for the VA um, as a training officer and buyer. Uh, and then I went to the Bureau of Reclamation and I spent four years there as a contracting officer. And then last year I was the small business specialist. So helping small businesses um, do business with the Bureau. Um, so that kind of led to my love of helping small businesses. And uh, when I left uh, federal government, I um, luckily NorCal PTAC was hiring when I was leaving and uh, I've been here a year and a half, maybe a little closer to two years now. Um, my specialty is, of course, federal uh, government contracting, but I have learned California state contracting as well, so um, I can help with that. Um, I especially enjoy doing the one-on-one -on -one counseling um, and helping you know, develop a plan for each client as they, as they come up. That's kind of my favorite part is helping people. Uh, next slide, we will... There we go. Um, so disclosure for this is uh, the information is um, accurate as the best of my ability. Uh, I updated everything yesterday. So everything is updated as of yesterday. And uh, if anything changes, um, if you're reading this, you know, a month or so from now or listening to this a month or so from now, um, just make sure that, you know, everything has remained current provisions and 
um, United States codes and, and all that stuff. So our agenda for today, and I just wanna uh, clarify, I know James was talking about it. I know um, the title slide does not say um, federal, um, but this presentation is about the federal women owned small business uh, certification. Um, so this is only for the federal government. If you plan to do business with the federal government, this woman owned small business certification. Um, so if you don't plan to do business with the federal government, it's good information um, to listen to. But if uh, you want to do with local government, like the state of California, uh, where we are, um, we can help you um, get through the publisher's clearinghouse and all of that to work with the cities and the local governments. Um, and the state does not have a women owned small business certification. So I just wanna clarify that before we get going, this is just for the federal government women owned small business certification. Okay, so here's our agenda for today. Um, we're gonna assess the purpose and the benefits um, of the program um, as well as the program requirements. Um, we'll go through the path to becoming certified and, and beta.certified.sba.gov. And we'll also talk a little bit about using the platform. Um, we'll look at the timeline and then how to maintain your certification once you have it. Uh, so I wanted to add some of the definitions. Um, we've done this um, presentation several times now, and, and sometimes it comes up what a, what a certain definition is. Uh, in the question. So I just want to get those out front in case um, you've never dealt with federal government contracting. Um, uh, so one of the things is a competitive set aside. Um, that means a contract um, is set aside um, for specific, uh, for small businesses, um, for a specific, um, um, such as a woman owned small business, um, an 8A business, um, a hub zone business. Um, so it's set aside for at least two small businesses um, or a small business, I'm sorry. Um, the sole source, it's a contract that's issued without competitive bidding. Um, usually happens when there's only a single business that can fill the requirement. So maybe someone has a cutting edge technology that no one else makes. Um, the government can sole source um, to that because that's the only manufacturer. So that's, uh, that's an instance of when we can do it. Or if we already have a full system um, and we just need a part, we can do sole source because no one else makes that part. Uh, NAICS codes, um, this is the standard used by um, the federal statistics agencies classifying business establishments um, and the SBA bases the small business side standards on the NAICS codes. Um, so they get the data from the federal statistics and then they determine uh, what makes a small business and then they put their size standards on that. Um, system for award management, that is the government site um, that serves as a registration uh, for all government contractors. Um, if you want, if you're a company and you want to do business with the federal government, you have to register in SAM. And then the DUNS number is a unique uh, nine digit serial number um, that identifies your business. Dun & Bradstreet creates a number uh, which generates a business profile and um, they investigate where your, where your address is and make sure um, that everything is good before you go into SAM to register. So the purpose of the program, um, it was established by 13 CFR Code of Federal Regulations 127.100. Um, I provided a link here if you wanna um, read more about um, the rule <laughs> or the regulation. Um, and the purpose of the program was to ensure um, that women-owned small business or economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses have an equal opportunity in the federal contracting, um, especially in NAICS codes that are historically male-dominated. Um, so trying to give um, women who want to break into male-dominated fields kind of a um, help up um, in competing for those contracts. Uh, some of the benefits are that solicitations for contact contracts can be exclusively set aside for um, women-owned small businesses so that they are the only business that can bid or propose on those solicitations, um, guaranteeing that a woman-owned small business will receive those contracts. So that's what we talked about, the set aside. Um, they can set aside a contract for only woman-owned small businesses. Um, and, and so that's how the program runs. It is a uh, 
Only certain NAICS codes are allowed to compete for the set asides and the sole source contracts. Um, and they're, like I said, they're usually uh, industries that are um, male dominated. And you can see here, I put two up here. Um, so office administrative services, um, someone who's an economically disadvantaged woman owned small business um, can go for this set aside or facility support services, uh, a woman owned small business um, can go for this set aside. Um, so if you don't have one of the NAICs, you can still be a well-known small business um, and, and that will help with uh, the statistics for um, moving forward in those NAICs codes. And let's see. And then we have sole source contracts, which I mentioned in the, the definitions. Um, and again, those are for specific NAICs, um, such as the set-asides. Um, and then the exception is if there's no other women owned small business that can compete and the ceiling is 6.5 million in manufacturing NAICs and 4 million in other NAICs codes. Um, the other benefits is there's a subcontracting preference. So prime contractors must um, do subcontracting to women owned small businesses, um, hub zone. Um, they, have, uh, they have a goal, same as the federal government to um, to hire these. Um, so that's good if you're a woman-owned small business and you want to subcontract with the prime that helps them, helps you and helps them with their goal. And then there's other um, opportunities for mentorship, such as the mentor protege program. Um, we don't have time to get into that now, but um, there are additional benefits to becoming a woman-owned small business. Uh, okay, let me... Uh, click through all this, forget we have all these fly-ins here. Okay, so like I said, the SBA has a goaling requirement each year for the, for the government. Um, and usually the goal for women-owned small business is 5% of all federal contracts. Um, as you can see here, uh, they met the goal in FY19 and um, got close in 18 and 20. Uh, for 21, uh, we're lagging behind, and I did check the stats yesterday, so this is as of yesterday. Um, we're at 3.7% and $8.4 billion. Um, so this should increase as we, uh, as we move in. We are eight months into the fiscal year, um, so the spin usually picks up um, as we move closer to September, which is the end of the fiscal year. Um, so the spin should increase, and hopefully... Um, when we look at it in uh, towards the end of September, we'll be up there in the, you know, the 25 billion range again um, and closer to 5%. Okay, so let's get into some of the program requirements. Uh, to be eligible for the Women's Contracting Program, you must be a small business and 51% uh, unconditionally owned and controlled by women who are U.S. citizens and the women must manage the day-to-day -day operations and make the long-term decisions for the business. So um, that's pretty stringent. Um, they're pretty stringent about the managing the day-to-day -day operations and making the long-term decisions. And then a little more about unconditional ownership. Uh, the entity must be at least 51% unconditionally and directly owned by one or more women. Um, direct means the direct ownership can't be held by another company or any type of trust or other ownership combination except for a revocable trust. Um, the ownership also cannot be subject to acquisition by others or being bought out through stock option. Uh, the woman or women must own the company with no possibility that someone else can take it over. So um, you must have total control of ownership um, that nobody can take away from you in any manner. Uh, partnerships must have 51% uh, of each class of the partnership interest unconditionally owned by one or more women. Um, LLCs must have 51% of each class of member interests unconditionally owned by one or more women. And corporations must have 51% of each class of voting stock outstanding and 51% of the aggregate of all stock outstanding unconditionally owned by one or more women. And they do ask for your stock register, copies of the front and back of your stock. Um, so be prepared for that if you are a corporation. Um, it doesn't say anything about sole 
sole proprietors, but I do get that question usually. And yes, sole proprietors can also um, apply for the woman-owned small business certification. Um, if you're a sole proprietor, then it's probably pretty easy to prove that you are a woman that owns the business. Um, so um, just to clear that up, sole proprietors can also do that. I usually get that question each time. Um, along with unconditional ownership, the women must control long-term decisions. Uh, we kind of went over that a little bit. Um, they have to have the ability to unilaterally exercise the powers common to a corporate board of directors. In essence, all decisions must be made by the woman with no one having the ability to override that decision. And the woman must also hold the highest position in the company and must control day-to-day -day management. And the bottom line is uh, they must own and control absolutely the management decision-making and cannot be in a position to be overruled or the company taken away from the women or the woman. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty strict and they are pretty strict in that standard um, when you're uploading your documents, um, improving, um, improving all of this. You, you have the highest position, you control and maintain it and nobody can take it away from you. This all has to be in your paperwork documentation when you submit it for the certification. Um, you must be able to, to maintain and control during the normal working hours of the business. And you can't have uh, outside employment that prevents you from devoting sufficient time to the woman-owned small business. Um, and men can be involved in the business uh, in management to include stockholders, partners, or limited liability members. And they may maintain the licensure for the business operation but males may not exercise actual control over the concern or the women. Uh, one of the example of this could be a construction company where men hold the license uh, or certifications for the work or the trade um, that they perform for the company, but the woman who owns the company has to make all the decisions on how the company is managed and is responsible for all the contracts. Okay, so that was, that was the women-owned small business. Um, and now we have the economically disadvantaged women-owned small business program requirements. Um, if you're economically disadvantaged, advantage, you can apply for this. Um, and we'll go through some of the program requirements for it. Um, but just remember, it's only certain NAICs that um, apply EDWSB. Um, so if you don't meet these requirements um, or you don't want to present all of your um, all of your finances and open your books for, for the government. Um, the WSB program is the way to go. EDWSB only has certain advantages for certain NAICs. Um, and you can look that up on that table um, that I presented in uh, the, one of the first slides. Uh, so to qualify, they must meet all the requirements of the women's contracting program. Um, they have to be owned and controlled by one or more women, each with a personal net worth less than $750,000. Um, so if you're in a partnership uh, with one or more women and you're applying, um, each of your personal net worth needs to be less than $750,000. Um, you have to be owned and controlled by one or more women, each with $350,000 or less in adjusted gross income, averaged over the previous three years, and be owned and controlled by one or more women, each $6 million or less in personal assets. And we'll kind of go into what, um, what each of these are here. Um, if your adjusted gross income over the past three years exceeds 350,000, the SBA will presume the woman is not economically disadvantaged. Um, and you may include the, the LLC, the S Corp or partnership income. If you can show evidence that the income that you made from that, uh, from that was reinvested back into the company pay taxes. Um, so, you didn't take the income for yourself and you reinvested it, um, you can exclude that from your uh, net worth. Um, income includes all sources, not just the W-2. So if you're taking ownership draws or bonuses or company stock in lieu of cash, that is part of your income. Um, if you happen to win the lottery or, or, or something like that, or receive an inheritance, um, you can rebut that as an unusual um, unusual source of income.
Okay, the woman's adjusted net, net worth must be under 750,000 and adjusted means the following are excluded. Um, equity in your personal residence, uh, equity in the EDWSB, and then income from the LLC, S Corp or partnership income, if again, you reinvest it back into the company um, and you don't have to claim your funds from the 401k or a retirement account. Um, and the unadjusted net worth must not exceed 6 million. So again, the 401k and similar, similar retirement account is excluded and the primary residence is, uh, is included. Okay, and then another thing about the EDWSB, you, you have to submit your financial information for your spouse um, unless you're legally separated. Um, and the spouse's financial situ situation will be considered when the spouse has a role in the business or has lent money to the business, provided credit or financial support to the business, or guaranteed a loan for the business. Um, the spouse's financial situ situation may be, be <laughs> may be considered if the spouse's business is on the same or similar line as a woman owned small business. So if you guys have a, um, if you have a shop open up next to each other and you share, um, you have a similar name, a website, equipment or employees, um, then your spouse's financial situation uh, is gonna be considered and um, you may get into um, a situation there of proving that it's a woman owned small business and that you run that business and your husband runs the other business. So just be aware of that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about our, um, the path to the certification. Um, you must have a DUNS number and you must be registered in SAM prior to applying uh, for the certification. Um, and as of July 15, 2020, so last year, there are only two ways to become certified. Um, and that's certifying through the SBA certification site, which is free. And then you can also certify through a third party certifier, which is a fee. Um, and even though you certify through the third party certifier, you still have to go to the SBA site and submit all your documents. So it's kind of better just to um, do the SBA certification site. Um, but if you feel like you wanna get pre-certified um, to go through the SBA site, that's fine too. Um, last I heard, it's about 300, 350 um, to do the third party certification. Um, they used to have self certification, um, uh, but that ended as of October 15, 2020. So you can no longer self certify. If you are self certified and have a contract with the federal government, um, that's fine as long for the term of the contract, um, but you should go ahead and, and get certified in the meantime. Um, they're not going to take your contract away um, because of a self-certification. If, if you're self-certified when the contract started, that's fine. Um, but go ahead and get your certification done because it's not going to last um, if you go into a new contract. Okay, if you are a veteran owned or an 8A certification, um, this will help you um, towards your woman-owned small business or the EDWSB. Um, they have a section in there if you're if you're already um, certified as either one of these. Um, it cuts down on some of the documentation that you have to do in the certification, um, especially if you do the 8A certification or if you're 8A certified. Um, that helps with your economic disadvantagement requirement if you're doing the EDWSB. Okay, here's a little bit more about that third party certification. Um, there are only four authorized um, entities that can do the third party certification. Um, they're listed here and I gave you a link if you, um, if you wanna check them out. Um, some people go ahead and do this. Um, they pay the 300 and get it done and then um, go into the system and just upload that documentation um, that they receive from the third party certifiers. Um, just to note that they, um, they use about the same standards as the SBA for certification, um, but they may require um, different information um, and they don't all use the same process for re reviewing documents. Um, and the SBA can still um, request further information to verify your eligibility 
Um, so even though you go through the certification process, there may be something um, that the government still wants from you when you go into um, beta certify to do the certification. Okay, and then the next one is to prepare. If you go to betacertify.sba.gov, the application process um, is made easier when you gather the required documents um, before starting your application. So on the Certify homepage, just click on the prepare link. Um, and this will give you a preparation checklist. Um, so you can get all your documents together. I recommend that you print the checklist um, and mark off the documents um, as you get them. Um, another um, good tip is to gather all your documents in the electronic form and uh, put them in one folder um, because you have to upload them. Um, there's no opportunity to drag and drop. Um, you have to actually upload each document one at a time. Um, and this makes it a lot easier. I've gone through this process many times um, and it makes it a lot easier if you have all the documents in a folder. Um, and also, you know, review your documents. You know, you may not have looked at them in a little while. Um, and just make sure that all the documents have you, the woman, as the owner. Um, and make sure that your LLC or your corporation um, um, work uh, documents say that you are the owner and no one can take the business away from you. Um, it needs to have these things in it um, for review by the SBA. So dust off your documents, um, make sure that's in there. If not, go ahead and um, get everything changed, you know, make amendment um, and get that all put in there. Um, so you won't have to do it later when they send it back to you saying it doesn't show that you um, are the owner and that no one can take it away from you. Um, they need to be specifically in that. Um, also make sure you have your meeting notes, uh, meeting minutes if you're a corporation and um, the backs and fronts of all your stock and your stock register showing um, any document that or any stocks that are not, um, well, just, the, <laughs> sorry, I lost the word I was gonna say, um, issued, docu issued stock and non-issued stock. Um, that should be on your, um, your register or in the copies of the stock certificates. So that's just for corporations. Okay, and then out on the website, they also have a knowledge base, um, which is really nice. And again, you could just come to knowledge base and um, they have the checklist here as well. Um, they also have um, a quick start guide, which is nice. Um, they have training on um, before you apply and applying and submitting. Um, so if you're gonna do this on your own, um, I recommend you come in um, out to the knowledge base and get all the information you can before you apply. Um, you can also come to uh, your PTAC, your local PTAC, um, and we can walk you through it. We've, we've been through a bunch of them. So um, if you want us to review your documents and then be there with you as you walk through each step, we can do that too. Um, and again, PTAC services are free. It won't cost you anything for that. Um, and we'd be happy to do it. It takes a little bit off your plate um, if you get someone to help you. Um, and again, it's free. So highly recommend you take advantage of that. Okay, the review timeline. Um, so like I said, the SBA will not re uh, review incomplete packages. Um, they'll get your package, they'll look through it. If anything's missing, they're gonna send you um, a message for you and tell you what, what needs to be done. Um, you'll have to go back into the application and open it up and upload any documents they want or um, make the changes to any documents, like if it doesn't say specifically um, that you own and control um, the government, you may have to do an amendment to your bylaws or your um, corporation. Um, to include that. Um, once they do have a complete package, um, they will let you know. Um, and well, let me back up a minute. Um, it usually takes them 15 calendar, calendar days to review and send it back to you or tell you that it's a complete package. Um, and then after that, they have a 90 day, 90 calendar days um, to review, to do the complete package and to issue the certification. Um, so this is their timeline right now. I'm um, 
kind of the end of last year, the beginning of this year, they were behind because the program just started. Um, I haven't heard lately if they are still still behind. So um, I'm going to assume that they've kind of worked out the bugs and um, it's the 90 calendar days. Um, if you happen to have a complete package and it's in review and you want to go for a well-owned small business set aside, um, you can you can go ahead and go for that. Um, if you happen to win, you can ask the CO um, to have your certification application um, expedited um, so that you won't miss out on that contract. Um, just keep that in mind if the contracting officer comes back to you and says that you're not certified, you can ask them to get your application expedited um, so that you'll be able to, to do that contract. Okay, to maintain your certification, you have to uh, do the uh, representations to the SBA, SBA that, it, um, that you're continuing to be eligible for that. So if anything changes, um, you need to let them know. Um, they'll do a full, full program examination every three years. So um, I'm not sure what that looks like yet because we haven't been three years into the program, but I imagine you just have to go in and um, if you have made any amendments or if there's anything new, um, you can go in and add those and they'll review it. Um, and just note about penalties for uh, misrepresenting yourself as a small woman-owned small business. Um, they can suspend or debar you. Um, they can do civil penalties and criminal penalties. Um, so just make sure um, everything that you submit is, is true. Um, and they've kind of gone this route for doing the woman-owned small business certification um, just because there was a lot of fraud in the program for, through the self-certification. So I just wanna make sure that the business is owned by a woman-owned small business. Um, there were some you know, businesses out there that were putting a woman as a figurehead um, just to get the uh, set-asides and to operate as a woman-owned small business. Um, so they're trying to put a stop to that. So um, that's one of the reasons they went to this, uh, making it mandatory to do the certification instead of the self-certification. Okay, some of the issues we've had um, is the SAM registration must have the owner specified in the government point of contact area in SAM. Um, they're supposed to be fixing this, but I don't know if they have or not. Um, if you go into the application and someone else is in government point of contact, it's gonna say that they're the owner. Um, hopefully they're gonna get that um, straightened out. Um, but as of now, you need to check your SAM registration before you do the certification and see who's in the government point of contact and change that if necessary. Um, all the documents, it tells you which documents to upload. Um, if you don't have a document such as, I know um, one for certain is um, single member LLCs. Um, they usually ask for um, your articles of organization and operating agreement. Um, but if you're a single member LLC, you wouldn't have an operating agreement because that, um, that tells how you're going to manage the business and how you're gonna overcome any disputes among other members. Um, if you're a single member, you don't have that. So um, you would just do um, a letter explaining that you're a single member LLC and you, you're not required to have that. So anything, any of the documents that you're missing um, that aren't required for you, you can just do a letter and upload to that position um, in the application. And again, the stock certificates, the front and back and the stock ledger, um, that seems to be a common thing that people um, forget to upload or um, aren't sure how to upload. Um, now the detailed resume with the management experience, um, please make sure that you, uh, when you do your resume, don't dust off an old one and upload it. Uh, make sure you have your current position and all you do for that business. Um, especially in regard to your management of the business. Um, that's an important one um, to have in there. They do look at those resumes and they do want that information in there. Um, and again, your documents that don't show your ownership. Um, again, you know, dust off those documents. Uh, or, or if you, even if you just started and you don't have this in there just because you, you know, you were in a hurry to, to get your company set up 
um, go back and look at your documents and make sure that it shows your specific ownership of the company um, and that it can't be taken away from you. Okay, and this is the this is what the website looks like. Um, and as I said, they do have the prepare and the uh, knowledge base. Um, I would go to the knowledge base. It has all the checklists. It has the media to show you how to do it. Um, if you have any issues while you're in the application, you can click on the help button and turn in a, a, a desk ticket and they'll get back to you. Sometimes there may be some kind of glitch in the system um, that you can't get past. Um, that does happen uh, quite a bit. Um, so um, just click on the help button. Um, I won't go over am I eligible um, because if you're a woman, if you're a woman-owned small business, you can get the woman-owned small business certification. If you go do the am I eligible and you're not in a NAICS, um, that is set aside for the woman-owned small business. It's going to tell you you're not eligible, but any woman can apply for the woman-owned small business certification. Um, so I wouldn't bother with I'm, am I eligible unless you want to find out if you qualify for hub zone and um, 8A and uh, veteran-owned business, that type of thing. Um, but any woman can fill out this application. When you come in for the first time, you're going to click on the get started and set up your um, set up your account in here. If you don't have a login.gov um, login, you'll have to go get that. Oops, sorry, I clicked on there. <laughs> go back, here we go. Um, and one important thing about the get started is, um, and I've dealt with this a couple of times, is um, the woman owned business owner has delegated um, this to someone else to do. Um, but it's really important that um, the woman that owns the business go in and do the get started and claim the business. Um, if that doesn't happen, it leads to a lot of issues. Um, so um, if you're the woman owned and you're going to delegate it to someone else to, you know, add all the documents and everything, you don't have time to do it. Please at least go in and do the get started, um, claim the business. And then on the second page, there's a delegate. Um, button and you can delegate someone else to upload all of your documents. Um, they can go in and upload all the documents, um, but then you'll have to go back in and submit it. Um, so I have had a couple of clients. Um, um, one in particular, the husband um, was doing this for her because she's a um, she's a therapist. Um, and she didn't have time to go in and do this part. Well, he went in and claimed the business um, and we've had issues um, all along and getting it done. We just finally got it settled um, last week, but it went on for a long time. So please um, make sure you claim the business and then you can delegate someone um, to upload the documents for you. And I believe that's the last of my slides. Um, you know, just want to touch on, you know, making sure you're prepared and eligible. Um, just to wrap this up, um, get in the knowledge base to understand uh, what you need to do for the application. Um, get with a PTAC counselor um, if you have questions and you want help going through this. Um, we're all pretty um, good at doing this now since it came online. Um, you know, and just review all the requirements, go back and make sure that you have the unconditional control, unconditional um, ownership, and, um, you know, move on from there, make sure all your documents are correct. Um, so that's all I'm going to do for now, and I'll turn it back over to James to talk about our upcoming events, and then we'll get into questions. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Nancy, for presenting. Uh -huh. Um, we, uh, you are welcome to stick around for the Q&A. The Q&A always has a ton of information. Um, that is the end of our main presentation. If you are going to leave for the Q&A, which again, don't recommend it, but you are welcome to, um, you'll be redirected towards a satisfaction survey. If you could fill that out real quick, if you do it anonymously, it makes a big difference for us to let, uh, to let us know how we're doing with our presentations and uh, makes a big difference to our funder as well. 
Um, to answer several people's questions in the chats and in Q&A, yes, the slides and this video recording will be provided to everyone. And I've just put into the chat uh, the uh, website where it's going is going to be our website, norcalptac.org slash webinars. Um, also at that website is our event calendar, which you'll see on the homepage there. I just wanted to quickly go through a couple of the events we have coming up. On May 27th, we've got a uh, webinar that we're hosting in partnership with the County of Santa Clara. So if you're in the Bay Area, you wanna do business with the county down there. They do a lot of business. So they have a request for quotations, invitations for bid webinar, Thursday, May 27th. Then I'm not gonna go through each one of these in detail, but we, we have a matchmaker coming up in July, on July 20th, you can see down at the bottom there. And we were putting together a series of webinars to prepare participants for them. But you can join to them individually if you'd like. We've got how to prepare for a matchmaker, statement of qualifications, doing business with state and local as well as federal agencies. Those start on July 6th and go through the 15th. So check out um, our website to take a look for those. And this matchmaker, this is a very, very cool thing. Um, we're gonna have lots of vendors, um, lots of buyers from the government agencies, ranging from city to state, federal, uh, even um, utility companies and things like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a platform that connects uh, your small business with them. There's also gonna be concurrent webinars, networking groups, and it's all free. It's an all day event. So please do check that out. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and get to some questions. And uh, just a reminder, you can direct your questions towards Nancy. You can also direct your questions towards Darlene if you have any questions for Darlene. And then also I see folks entered some questions in the chat. Um, we have um, we've had about 80 and change uh, participants today, which is a lot. If everybody answers the questions into the chat, I won't be able to keep track of them. So if you could please enter your questions into the Q&A, um, that will enable us to all uh, keep track of them. So I'm going to read the questions aloud that have been submitted. And um, uh, Nancy or Darlene will take them. And uh, uh, let's see how much how much time we have to get through these. What we may go a little bit over. But like I said, you guys are welcome to take off and you review the video yeah. later if you'd like. I tried to end a little early today. So we had time. So I, I thought your timing was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. First question comes from Nina Rankin. I am pivoting from healthcare to transitional and housing for veterans and long-term uh, uh, long in, in incarcerated releases. Is there some support available to help me reach this goal? Uh, well, that's not really a woman. That's not really a woman on small business question, but um, you can always contact your local PTAC and I'm sure they can help you one-on-one -on -one, um, to reach that goal. That could be a WC, WBC question. Yeah, and if you would like, I'll put my um, email on chat and you can reach out to us directly to get more information about what that entails. Okay. Perfect. All right. Second question comes from Laura Hensley. Where do we find out what NAICS is a preferred contract? My main NAICS is a general store, but I also operate a mobile food vendor business that caters to DOT and Main Street cone zones with prime... Prime's joint venture partnership. NAICS for a preferred contract. Is that, is that a term you're aware of? I, I guess I'm not really, I, I don't know if she means NAICS for the set-aside contracts. Um, the NAICS for the set-aside contracts will be in that, um, I did provide a link for, uh, let me see if I can go back real quick. Uh, for the NAICS for woman-owned small business, I think it's in one of the first. The hyperlinks will be available to everyone yeah. once they're up, once the slides oh, are uploaded. Um, if you want to look in this woman-owned small business EDWSB NAICS table, that's the list of all uh, NAICS that will be eligible for set-asides, set-aside contracts, like the examples I gave here. Um, so you could look up your NAICS. I don't know what they are for a mobile food vendor, um, anything like that. So um, you can look those up for the set-aside contracts. If you're talking about um, a prime contract where you're a sub on, if you're a woman-owned small, certified woman-owned small business, um, they should get the, um, they should get the, um, what do I want to say? The credit for ha having a woman-owned small business. 
Um, so I'm not sure which one you're exactly talking about here. Um, if you want to click on that link and um, check the table for your NAIX code, um, that will help you with the set aside contracts. And I've just dropped the link in the chat. So oh, okay. take a look at that there as well. But like I said, everyone's getting these slides. Um, someone just asked if the video of the Q&A will be available as well. And yes, we're still yeah. recording. So that's all. Yeah, we're still recording. Fun. Yeah. Um, so someone is just hoping that you could go over what's the difference between the WOSB and the oh, okay. WSB real quick again. Okay. Again, the woman on small business um, is just if you're owned um, and controlled by a woman, um, the economically disadvantaged woman on small business has all the um, all the income and uh, other um, and all the other information that you have to provide. So you have to provide all of your, let me get to that one, well, yeah. So the EDWSB, um, you have to prove that you're economically disadvantaged. So um, you can't have the net, your net worth has to be less than 750. Um, your gross income has to be less than 350. Um, so that's the difference. Um, and again, the EDWSB, there's only certain NAICs that qualify for that. Um, so again, uh, James put the, the NAICs code um, in the chat. You can go look up and see what your NAICs code is um, and see if you qualify for the EDWSB. Um, the only advantage of the EDWSB is set asides for EDWSB. Um, so you can look at those NAICs and see if you qualify for that. Otherwise, I would just do the woman-owned small business. Um, that way you don't have to provide all of your economic information um, to the government to try and qualify for that if you don't even have a NAICS um, for that. All right, thanks for that clarification. Um, so an anonymous attendee is asking, if I have an external full-time job, but I'm also the person who manages my photography business and oversees everyday operation, does the external job disqualify from disqualify me from applying for the certification? Um, I think in this example, um, I would do a, a detailed letter of explanation, um, kind of breaking up how much time you spend on each thing. Um, it doesn't automatically disqualify you, but they just want to make sure that you have the time um, to spend on your business and oversee the day-to-day -day operations. So uh, when that question comes up, I would just do you know, kind of a detailed letter about how you're splitting your time between the businesses, just to show that you are um, um, overseeing the daily operations and it's the outside job is not affecting um, the business. Okay, good to know. Shalina's asking, can you certify two different businesses that you own? Um, <clears throat> they're each woman owned small business, they're each registered separately in SAM and they're each have a different DUNS number, um, you should be able to. Okay. You can claim each of the businesses and, and put in for it. Thanks. Cheryl's uh, asked, wondering if having a DBE, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise certification makes it easier to get certified. Well, the DBEs are done through the state. Um, <coughs> usually if it's an 8A, um, if you're an 8A with the federal government, it's easier. Or if you're a veteran owned small business, it's easier. Um, the DBE doesn't count towards um, federal certifications, it's a state certification. Okay. Perfect. Um, um, regarding yeah. the set asides, Denise is asking regarding the set asides, is the 6.5 and 4 million added together? The 26 billion in government contracts annually for women out of a total of what dollar amount? <laughs> Let me get back to, okay. So the 6.5 million is if you have a manufacturing NAICS and the 4 million is if you have like a service NAICS. Um, so no, they're not added together. And that's for a sole source contract. I think that's where your question comes from. Um, that's only if you're gonna get a sole source contract. Uh, 26 billion in contracts. Uh, I don't have that. Um, I think this is where you're talking about. I don't have the total amount, um, but I mean, it's hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, so 
they reached 5% of the cost was 26 billion. So I don't know what the total amount was. I, I, I can write that down next time for the next one, but nobody's ever asked that before. <laughs> but well, it's, it's, it's not, by... yeah, it's a, yeah. Just have to do some 26, math. 26 times 20, who's got that? Who's a whiz? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> James, can you do that? 300, 420, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, it's hundreds of billions of dollars, so. A lot of money. Okay, Yannick is asking, um, the 8A program is limited to nine years. First question, is there a time limit for participation as WOSB no. WSB entity? Uh, no, as long as you're a woman-owned small business, you can stay certified as a woman-owned small business. Um, even if you graduate graduate out of 8A and you use that um, for your um, for your application for EDWSB, um, if you outgrow EDWSB, um, you can just be a woman-owned small business if you still qualify <laughs> for the woman-owned small business. So, Perfect. as long as you're a woman-owned small business, you can still be a woman-owned small business. <laughs> <laughs> and for the MPP, are there any limitations set by the SBA? Not sure what the MPP is. What's the MPP? If, if neither of us are sure, we'll skip that question. No, I don't know what MPP is. Uh, Layla Wilson's asking, I opened my business, medical building and collection company, in 2002, together with my husband, 5050. Since 2008, my husband is not involved in the business as he owns another totally different business in a different state. Will it be frowned upon if he rewrites all shares to me now before I apply for certification? That's a good question. Uh, no, he could go ahead and do that. And um, if you want, you can also do, um, again, another letter of explanation saying, um, you know, that we've just continued this way. And, um, you know, he owns another business now. So he's you know, signing them back over to me. I've had people do this um, in preparing for um, doing the certification. I've had people um, do this, make amendments and, and, and move things around. So it's not a problem. Okay. How is this beneficial to a woman business? Um, I just want to clarify for MPP with mentor protege program. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking mentor protege program. Um, cause hardly anyone asked about that. Um, what was the question again? I, did you dismiss that one? Or? Uh, for the MPP, are there any limitations set by the SBA? Oh, well, that's getting into the whole program, I think, right? Um, I really don't want to get into the whole MPP program here. Yeah, that's a okay. lot. But you're yeah. welcome to email us at info at norcompetent.org, and I can, I can get an answer for you or, or apply for services, better yet, whatever your PTAC is. Okay. Um, how is this beneficial to a woman? So we may have gone over that since they asked. How is this beneficial to a woman business? Do you have a pithy response? Yeah. How's <laughs> pithy well, response for it? Yeah. If you plan to do business, yeah, if you plan to do business with the federal government and you're a woman-owned small business, um, you can get woman-owned small business set aside. So that's kind of benefit of doing the certification. Nice and simple. Remember, and remember, this is a federal program, not a state program. This is federal. If you don't plan to do business with the federal government, then you don't need to worry about this. There's a state program you can get into. Yeah. I do get a lot of questions from clients that are not interested in doing federal, but they still right, do right. AOSB. And I'm, so I'm this is, them, yeah, this is, to oh, this is, <laughs> this is totally federal government. Um, if you want expenditure state, of time, yeah. Right. Yeah. If you want state, you can get with a PTAC counsel, counselor or Darlene. Um, for the state certifications. Uh, they open Any the business time. get the certification if they've just opened up and don't don't actually have a client uh, base yet and there's no revenue? Yes. Get it right away. If you want to do the federal government. Um, so where do you go to find WOSB set aside contracting opportunities? Um, you'll look in um, beta.sam and you can do search. Um, on current opportunities, you can do, um, they do have a set aside block in the search where you can put woman owned small business. Um, and I'll bring up everything that is currently in solicitations for woman owned small business. All right, I will drop that in the chat right here. You can handle the next one. 
just take a look. Um, is this geared towards nonprofits or what kinds of businesses qualify for this federal opportunity? It is not geared towards nonprofits. These are for-profit businesses. So. For-profit businesses. Yeah. And that the same goes for PTAC services. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to assist nonprofits, even if it's for something that a nonprofit is eligible for, such as a um, cage code or something. Um, Leila. Leila Wilson, uh, another question. Is a medical billing company the type of service that can qualify for federal contracting with VA hospitals? It's a general question. Um, that would be something we'd have to explore. We'd have to go look at the data um, and see which agencies actually um, contract for medical billing. Um, if you wanna contact your local PTAC, your counselor can uh, pull that information up for you and see if federal contracting is right for you um, or if you need to go state or local. Um, Marketplace <laughs> research, that's a big topic. Um, what is a DUNS number? Let me get back to my definitions. Um, a DUNS number um, there on the screen. Um, I had it in the definitions. Um, currently, it's a number that you have to call in and get in order to register in SAM. Um, it gener generates a business profile, um, your company name, phone number, address, number of workers, line of business, and other corporate information. And you have to have the DUNS number in order to register in SAM. Um, they are going to change it, but I don't want to get into that detail because it's another year before they change it. So right now we're using DUNS numbers. Um, PTAC counselor can call and get you a DUNS number um, in no time. Uh, if you go through the actual process, they'll, they'll want a lot of documents. So if you're going to get a DUNS number, I highly recommend you sign up for PTAC and have your counselor call and get it for you. And does the woman-owned small business need to be an LLC? That's a no. No. no, you can be an LLC, a corporation, or a sole proprietor. Thanks. Um, Donna's asking if we will review your resume as well. Um, yeah. Well, kind of. We, we won't review your resume for general business purposes, but. Um, no, I think she means within the woman owned small business certification. We can review all your documents for the certification. Okay, yeah. If it's we wanna, Yeah, if we want to keep it in that context. Um, we can do that. All right. Um, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So right. I just answered that one. I um, that. <laughs> it's not that one. So some trouble joining. Um, I believe there is a PTAC in Georgia. Yeah. You're welcome to look that up. The website is aptac, A-P-T-A-C dash U-S dot org. Um, you can also just Google Georgia PTAC, uh, or whatever your search engine is. Um, that's, uh, I'm going to dismiss that question as well. Mm. Um, and that one. That one. <laughs> um, someone's asking for Darlene's email, I believe. Was Did that on And I put it on chat. I'll put it again. Yeah, Darlene's email is in the chat now. So I think I think it's fine. <laughs> oh, I guess we didn't have it in our info, did we? OK. OK. Um, if you have a unique business like mine and do not have the capacity to mass produce, are there companies that will work with disadvantaged women to mass produce? I I that's, not a, that's not a WOS. That might, be a Dar that might be a Darlene question. I don't know. I'm sorry, I was putting my email. What was the question? <laughs> the question is, if you have a unique business like mine and do not have the capacity to mass produce, are there companies that will work with disadvantaged women uh, businesses to mass produce? Uh, there are companies. Again, you can um, call me, use my email to talk to me further. We could talk more about your specifics. All right. Thanks, Darlene. Thanks, Deborah. Mm -hmm. um, is there an additional preference for a minority owned EDWOSB? No, they don't break it down to minority owned. It's all about whether you're economically disadvantaged or not, with, not whether you're a minority. But there is a minority owned certification as well, right? You can self certify as a minority owned business. You can self certify for that. Um, I know the state also has an MBE. That's the state, not federal. Um, and Darlene knows about um, those. Yes. Um, again, this is something we'd have to look up and see if the federal government does life coaching. I doubt it, but it may be a state or local um, that can do that. Okay. And someone's asking, is there's only funding for set-aside contracts or, or 
can the owner propose an idea to be funded? That sounds like more like a grant application or something. Um, that could be a grant or an unsolicited, unsolicited. unsolicited proposal. That's yeah. not, we're not into that right now. Uh, Mentor protege, I think we went over that. Um, Laura is asking, so it sounds like it's important to claim your business. Yes. Like getting yes. Of SBA. yes, Laura. Uh, <laughs> yes, Laura, if you're the owner um, and you want someone else to do the um, actual uploading of documents, just make sure you go in and claim your business first as the owner. There's a big warning at the top of that. Um, so, so go in and claim your business. And then if you want to delegate someone else to upload those documents, like you don't have time to do it. Um, you can do that in there, but it's very important that you claim the business. And then when they're done uploading, you have to go back in and submit the application. You're not, your delegates aren't allowed to submit it. So. Okay. We've got a question here asking again about the difference between EDWSB yeah. and WSB. I'm going to go ahead and skip that since we talked about it before. Yeah. Basically there's set of different set of sides for them. Um, yeah. Um, and yes, this yeah. is being recorded. You'll get the video of the whole thing. So everyone will be able to review. All right. And it is 1110 right now. Um, I know that was a fast paced thing, but we just don't want to keep <laughs> everyone long. Um, we know you've got back, you've got businesses yeah. to go manage. Um, but so once again, thanks everyone for joining. Like I said, there's going to be a satisfaction survey. Um, you'll be redirected towards it as you leave this webinar. Um, I'll also put it in the email later today when I let you guys know that the video and the slides with all the hyperlinks are going to be posted and it's going to go to our website. I put the, the link in the chat as well. Um, so just want to say big thanks to Darlene Neal for partnering with us for this event on the WBC Oakland. Um, and thanks, Nancy, for putting all of this research. Uh, it takes a lot of work to put together one of these webinars. So. Right, yeah. And I just want to say, you know, I know this was fire hose because um, we only have an hour to do this. Um, if you do have any questions, please, you know, get with your local PTAC and um, become a client. It's free to you. We have all kinds of um, things that we can do for you. Um, get with Darlene if you have other local questions uh, within her area. Um, but please... Um, yeah, I just want to pitch for NorCal PTAC or other PTACs out there. Um, we can help you. You don't have to go it alone to do this. Definitely. And a reminder to take a look at our service area map. Um, if you fall in a different county, I'll be, uh, I won't be accepting. But we would like to see your application if you are there. And I'm sure all the other PTACs across the country would like to see your applications as well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thanks. Thank you, and hope to see you guys at a future web, uh, webinar. So thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone. Thank right. you. Bye-bye.